what is good internet it is spirit of paradox here and welcome back to another video today we are going to be doing ultimate origins issue number three where we are going to be talking about the mutants so if you haven't caught up with this series i highly recommend watching my other videos on ultimate origins issue number one and two and we have also got another series of the ultimates from 2002 written by mark millar and drawn by brian hitch we are going to be doing this series and doing more ultimate universe content leading up to ultimate invasion in june so if you are an ultimate universe fan or if you're excited for ultimate invasion this is the channel you want to be on so if you enjoy ultimate universe content or my content make sure you drop a like and if you're new to the channel subscribe there's plenty more where this is coming from so with all further ado let's start ultimate origins we continue the plot with the ultimate fantastic four and they are asking questions amongst one another like is it watching us is it a living being is it a machine that's broadcasting and so on and so forth and then they start wondering if it's a weapon carol danvers asks is it a weapon and reed is possibly suggesting it could be a bomb or confiscated from the enemy and then we see it glow some more with its red eye and then Carol Danvers starts to get worried and tells everybody to get out the room. Everybody is starting to leave the base and Carol Danvers basically explains how she wants this pillar off planet. And then Reed Richards is basically like, yeah, I wouldn't do that, Director Danvers. And she basically asks him, what do I want? And Reed gives his suggestions, like giving her some experts to get readings, find out why it's here and who puts it here and so on and so forth. And then she angrily responds, yes, I want answers. There's a paper trail that leads to this. Find it or go home. Because now she's actually pretty worried that there's going to be another alien invasion. And oh boy. While Carol is going on her tirade, one of the soldiers is trying to get her attention by shouting her name. She responds with I'm busy and he says it's important. Then she says back, what's more important than this? Well. Then we cut to Tony Stark's mansion, the home of the Ultimates, and they start to realize they have a watcher in their garden watching them. And across different places around the world, more and more watchers start to pop up and start to appear in different places, even Wolverine's being watched by one. Reason why they are popping up now is because this is actually a prequel directly to the events of Ultimatum, and the Watchers obviously watched the whole situation happen, and I don't really want to go into the rest of that story. The people around the world are starting to notice these Watchers, and they're like, what's going on? People in their everyday activities, at work, watching TV, at home eating pizza, these watches are popping up out of everywhere and their eyes are starting to glow. But when it starts to glow, it shows us another time period, back in 27 years ago. The watcher takes us back to Alberta, Canada 27 years ago, when Wolverine is locked up in the test tube full of water. And we see somebody. We see somebody in the same room as him, but we don't know who. And he says, get up. And we see Wolverine wake up and he does not look happy at all. This man claims to know who Wolverine is and even states his name, James. I know what they did to you. Your name is James, not Mutant X or Weapon X, James. And he says, I know it's over now and you're free. And then we hear somebody say, Eric, please. And yes, people, this is a young Eric Lencher, a.k.a. Magneto. So in the Ultimate Universe, he actually saves Wolverine. Someone with guards comes down some stairs and says, Eric, please, this isn't how to to do this this isn't your place and then we find out this is actually his mother mother you look scared are you scared of me and i am right now yes eric and then put everything back and calm down and then eric responds with your life's work is to torture this man and she responds with 
My life's work is to find a cure. And then he says for me, for all of you, you have a disease I'm trying to help cure. And then this is the dark part of Magneto. He says, goodbye mother, I hope there is a hell. This is one of the differences between the Ultimate Universe and the mainline Marvel Universe. In this one, Eric Lencher kills his mother, and in the original continuity, Magneto's mother gets murdered by the Germans. So here, Magneto is a lot more darker and is a lot more different compared to the mainline Magneto. We skip to 18 years ago in San Francisco and we see a young Charles Xavier teaching his class. While this is happening, he starts to hear a voice from somebody in the room. And then we start to see this man in a trench coat all in black talking to Charles Xavier via his mind. Charles would eventually ask, who are you? And the man would respond in his mind saying, my name is Eric, I would like to buy you lunch. And this is how Ultimate Charles Xavier and Ultimate Eric Lencher meet each other for the first time. Charles and Eric seem to be getting on very well when they meet each other outside. Eric explains how he's read Charles's book and was moved by it. And then Charles seems quite surprised to hear this from another mutant. And then would eventually ask, how come I can't read your mind? And he says, I could see people's manifestations when they're using them. And Charles asks, is that your manifestation? And says, no. And then he asks, what is it? And it's magnetic fields. And Charles explains, really? I'd really like to see it. Charles and Eric would go into an alleyway and Eric would demonstrate his abilities by crushing down bin canisters into steel balls. And Charles seems very fascinated and asks, have you tested yourself? And Eric would respond informally. Charles would ask the same question again. Why can't I read your mind? I really don't know, Eric responded. Maybe our powers contradict each other. That really intrigues me. We should examine that. And then Charles would respond, you're not blocking me out. And then Eric also responds with this, how would I do that? Charles would say, I don't know. Eric would respond with, you've never met anyone like me before? Whose mind I couldn't get into? Not that I know of. Charles and Eric would talk via the mind, and it would also explain how it works. It's like having a conversation, projecting a thought onto Charles that he can hear, but not actually get into his mind. Eric would then eventually explain why he was here and how he wants to pursue the goal to cultivate the mutant race and how he loved the idea. And then Charles would say, okay, do you have a billion dollars? Eric would respond, no, I have something better. In the next page, we see Eric Lencher and Charles in the savage land and explain this is going to be the place where the mutants will reside. And then Charles and Eric start to talk and Eric says this is proof that there is a god. Yes, but it's too far away. Charles, 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 come meet your students. A lot has changed since you were last here. Eric would then take Charles to a cave where his brotherhood of mutants would reside in. And he says in his mind, our brotherhood, can you feel how excited they are to see you? They have gathered to do exactly which you have written. So all of these mutants are admirers of Charles's work and believe in his idea that mutant kind should have its own society. Charles would have some disagreements with this by thinking that this society would be too far away from the rest of the world. And Charles seems to think this isn't really a good idea, but the people who lived there explained they came to this land specifically where the place where no normal human can survive in, and that no human would ever come here, but all mutants are welcome to the savage land. One of the mutants would say, we're building a new society, just like you said. But Charles would respond with, yes, yes, there's one thing to fantasize about it, and then there's another thing to write about it, and now we're here, the real thing. Eric would then explain to Charles that there was something he didn't tell him about his family's history. He explains his parents were Canadian Weapon X agents and then Charles would respond, 
Canadian, where they found the first mutant. You were there? And he says, yes, I was born into a relatively normal life. And then he goes in about how his mutation activated. He explains, when he turned 13, he made the silverware dance. So his father got drunk and tried to kill him. But when he did this, he pulled the gun on him, but he turned the bullet around in mid-air, right back at him, without realizing he did it, as a self-defense mechanism of some sort. Eric would then later explain that that was the day he knew what his parents did for a living, where he lived. He broke into their labs and freed Mutant X, and he says that the rumors are true, Charles. They were doing experiments on him all day every day for decades right under my nose they were seeing what would happen if they did this or that i freed that mutant my first one i freed him he also explains how his mother was killed trying to stop him and then at that moment he knew what his life's work was to set us free one by one if i had to but all of us he was the first mutant x will he come here Charles wonders. Eric would then say, no Charles, his path is his own, he's welcome here anytime and he knows that. But to take him out of a prison and make him stay here if he didn't want to, would be putting him into another one and this isn't what this is about. But if you guys do not know, Ultimate Wolverine would eventually join the Brotherhood of Mutants. This would be in the very early days of Ultimate X-Men where he originally joins the Brotherhood of Mutants and then becomes an X-Men. But that's not the point Magneto is trying to make. And the point he is trying to make is the reason why the mutants are in the Savage Land is simply because the human race isn't ready for them. Oh, but they will be, perhaps even in their lifetime, but not now. You know this as much as I've said it. And then Charles would respond with, I said education of the mutants is a part of it. Education of the human masses is another. And then Eric would then respond with, one thing at a time, Charles. Today is about us. In your head your, is your dream school. You've dreamt it. You've fas fantasized about it. Down to the very detail, right? Let me see it. Put it in my head. Show me your vision of the world. And then Charles basically says, okay, and shows him the idea in his head. And then Magneto starts to mold it out of metal. And then we see in the last page of the issue that Magneto has made a giant metal fortress. And then we see out there in the background, the ultimate watcher is watching. To be continued. And that was Ultimate Origins issue number three. Yes, people, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like. If you are an Ultimate Marvel fan, if you love the Ultimate Universe, this is the channel you want to be on. So make sure you drop a subscribe. I'm going to be doing Ultimate Origins and the Ultimates. So at the moment, we're doing the original Ultimates. I'm going to be doing issue number two next. And then after that, we have got Will Ultimate Comics Return After Ultimate Invasion? So we've got that as well. And then hopefully next week we can get back on schedule with the Monday, Wednesday and Friday uploads. And we'll see how it goes from there. But I just want to say thank you so much for the support I have been getting. I used to be a YouTuber back in the day. Like I had an old channel. I never had this kind of like response. Like I never had this when I first started it up. So I just want to say thank you so much for watching my content and even commenting like thank you. Like thank you so much for making this little dream of mine come true. I love I love comics man and I want to share my my passion with that of people and it's really good to see there are other people out here who like it. So I just want to say thank you very much for all your support. Even if you're new here, you haven't even dropped a like and you're just watching the video, thank you to you too. It really is helping with what's going down in my personal life. So if you guys don't know. My great grandmother did pass away on the 8th of this month. I have been living with my great grandmother for over 10 years. And it, it, it was really painful man. 
But I just want to say my upload schedule will be coming back to, to the regular Monday, Wednesday and Fridays. But um, I've got family situations to deal with. And I just want to say thank you again for understanding. And I will see you lot in the next video. You have a great day. Take care.